What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you the full story of Beyond Divinity. So Beyond Divinity is the second game in the Divinity series, and it takes place 20 years after Divine Divinity. Unlike Divine Divinity's story, where I had to break it up into parts and kind of take you through everything, this is going to be much shorter than that. It's pretty much going to be this episode. And the reason for that being is that the structure of Beyond Divinity is very simplistic. So what I mean by that is there are four acts. Each act has a very specific goal, and the end goal, uh, well, we know now, is of course getting a certain somebody out of Nemesis. There are a couple of uh, big lore points, but we're just talking the, the main story here, so that's all we're really going to cover. So I'm going to give this a bit of a preface, which is what this is right now, going over it. And then the nice thing about Beyond Divinity is at the end of the game, they actually give a big cinematic that actually retells the entire story for you. So I'm just going to give each act some context, and then I'm pretty much going to let that cinematic do the rest of the work, because that's what it's there for. Beyond Divinity, you start out with the opening sequence uh, showing that you're a paladin that was trapped in Nemesis by the demon Samuel. Because he's a sadistic guy, he soulforged you to a death knight. Now, a uh, death knight is, of course, a knight um, that are typically bound to evil forces. Um, they're not like simpletons or anything, but, you know, for the most part, they serve a master. They, they're they not typically people you find acting of their own agency. You get soulforged to this death knight. Act 1 is all about escaping that prison, uh, the citadel. You have to get out of it. That's the entirety of Act 1, is getting out of that citadel. Now, after you're out of that citadel, you kind of want to figure out how to escape Nemesis, the dimension that you're on. So you started out in Rivalon, you were attacked uh, by Samuel, who drug you into Nemesis, which is the demon's realm. It's not their home realm, and that's an important note, but Nemesis is a realm controlled by demons. So Act 2 is all about helping this imp village. And by doing so, they possess the knowledge of how to get off the planet, or at least where to go look for it. After helping the imps with some local drama, uh, they tell you that you need to go find the Renar. The Renar are, are the original inhabitants of Nemesis, and that they have a special ability called Rift Running that allows them to transport between dimensions. Before you can do that, Act 3 starts by you being uh, abducted by a demon named Asmodeus. He finds a Renar elder, someone who knows how to do all this stuff, transforms them into a doll, and then Act 3 is about you figuring out how to reverse that so she can tell you where to go. Now, this is where we come across a Renar temple that is being occupied by uh, the Damned One's forces. The Damned One, of course, uh, we don't know this at this point in the story, mind you, but we know this personally because we know the story. The Damned One is a very central figure in Divinity lore. Of course, is Damien. We know from the context at this point that he was banished to Nemesis. No one's seen him in a little while. The Damned One are occupying this old Renar temple, and that if they can get into the actual church part of the temple, it's possible to undo the spell on the Elder Renar that Osmodeus caused, and then she can tell you how to riff run, basically, or where to go to learn it. So that's pretty much Act 3. You do all that, you free the Elder Renar, she tells you about a crystal that is very important. Now, this is where we learn, and we, we know a little bit of this up to this point, but just giving you kind of the overall, but just trying to make this make a little more sense. It turns out demons on Nemesis are immortal because there is a crystal that protected uh, Nemesis from outside forces. And it's been shattered and removed from its home world, and that allows the demons to siphon energy from their actual home plane, which makes them immortal. The second they take damage, it's immediately healed. Because of that, the Renar were unable to fight back against the demons when all this went down, which is why they lost their home realm. Throughout most of Act 2 and Act 3, you've been being summoned by a necromancer who was mentioned at the beginning of the game. So he's actually been having you piece together this crystal, which is why your paladin, the main character, has was after him to begin with. At the end of Act 3, he finally manages to piece all of the crystal together. So you... So after he does that and puts it all back together, you and the Death Knight manage to kill him because he's been summoning you to Rivalon. You guys manage to kill him, overpower him, take, uh, get you know transported back to Nemesis because that's how summoning works when the magic ends. So you take the crystal, you go back to Nemesis, you replace the crystal in its rightful slot, which of course makes demons uh, not immortal again, by the way, which is an important plot point for later games, but definitely this one as well. And then it's at this point that the 
Renard Elder tells you that you need to go to the Renard Academy because that's where all the information on rift running is, and you should be able to still learn it if you can, you know, kind of decipher all what all the ghosts and everything are doing there. Because the Renard Academy was destroyed uh, by demons, but all of the inhabitants were turned into ghosts. So in this way, we can still learn the rift running. Now, Act 4 is all about the Renard Academy. So you're going through it, kind of learning the principles and stuff as you go. And then at the end of it, you learn that Damien, when he was first exiled from Rivalon to Nemesis, that the Renar actually took him in and tried to teach him riff running, which he mastered. However, the problem was that when he used that riff running to try to escape Nemesis, it wouldn't work. Now, we know this now, but that is because Lucian the Divine had banished him to Nemesis in lieu of killing him a second time. So this is, of course, when we find out that Damien was the baby from the first game that Lucian couldn't bring himself to kill. After a series of events that I explained in my Divinity series timeline, Damien found himself here on Nemesis, learned this rift running, um, was frustrated that it wouldn't work for him because, as he finds out, and this is because the Renard traveled to Rivalon and spoke to Lucian, Lucian, using his powers as the Divine, didn't just banish him to Nemesis. He actually put up a sort of divine cage around Nemesis that prevents Damien specifically from leaving unless he's let out by Lucian or a member of the Divine Order. So at this point, it's absolutely no surprise to anyone that when we use our riff running ability to escape Nemesis, that the Death Knight we've been traveling with this whole time is actually Damien, and he's tricked you, because you're a member of the Divine Order as a paladin, into freeing him from Nemesis by basically him using this hilarious plan to teach you how to riff run and then using you to take him out despite the fact that he already knows how to do it. So once on Rivalon, he reveals this to you. He breaks the soul forging because that is actually a weird quirk of Damien. He is a master of soul forge magic, which I think is important. That's pretty much where the game ends. You have a short battle with Damien. Now that said, he's still very weak from the whole ordeal of everything going on. He's not recovered his power. Because of his help, uh, Damien allows this paladin to go on and we assume live he makes a vague threat and then what like what happens to this paladin nobody actually knows it's assumed damien probably caught up with him and murdered him at some point but who knows maybe he went on to lead a happy life and that is the story of divine divinity so with that out of the way i'm going to let this uh nice cinematic roll instead of this footage here and that'll explain the rest of the story and that'll be it guys so there you go beyond divinity probably the shortest in terms of like actual story videos that i'll need to make but, in my opinion, one of the more important bits of Rivalon and Damien the Damned One's history. So there you go, guys. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment down below, all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching. See you around. Free. At last I have broken the bonds that have chained me for so long. I am finally released from that accursed world and back where I belong. I am home. But now you... You who have been beside me for so long should know the truth of how this came to pass. My mentor, the so-called Divine One, threw a terrible curse upon my young self. I was doomed to wander Nemesis for the rest of my days unless my mentor or one of his followers wished me to leave. A group of paladins who had been hunting down one of my devoted Black Ring members would provide the key to my escape. My follower, a dark necromancer, took the risky decision to summon the demon overlord Samuel to his aid. This particular demon is as subtle as a battle axe, and many times more deadly. He is, however, unquestionably stupid, a quality I've always found endearing in him, but this time he proved to be most useful. Samuel was as brutal as his reputation, and he killed all the paladins with ease. All apart from one, that is, Samuel always likes to take home a battlefield memento. And if that memento was still alive and kicking, then so much the better. It was this paladin who would provide the answer to freeing me from my prison. Samuel took that luckless character back to his citadel fortress on Nemesis, where he thought the paladin would make an ideal addition to his collection of pets, which he tortured and demoralized on a regular basis. It was then that a demon known as Asmodeus drew my attention to Samuel's new guest. Together, Asmodeus and I devised a plan to free me from Nemesis. Asmodeus broke the lock on the paladin's cell, and when they tried to escape, I was held responsible. 
All it took was a little convincing that soul forging would be an appropriate punishment. Weakened by the soul forging, both of us lapsed into unconsciousness. When I awoke, I freed myself from Samuel's primitive cell and killed the guards. The burning feeling in my head told me the soul forging had been successful. All that was left to do was for me to introduce myself to my new best friend, you. After I was first imprisoned on Nemesis, I spent much time with a race called the Renar, the elders of which had harnessed the ability to open rifts. Despite studying this rift running, my curse meant I could not just open a rift and travel through it. But if we could locate a Renar elder and travel through a rift together, the curse would be broken. Poor Samuel. It's not much fun being at the beck and call of a summoner, especially when you're a demon overlord and you've been made to leave a very promising torture session. But thankfully, Samuel was summoned away from us just in time. Otherwise, I would have been forced to reveal my real self and give him a good thrashing. I'm not sure what to make of my new companion. The relentless cheerfulness is somewhat irritating. But then, it seems to work on some of the peons we've met. I have to admit a grudging respect for this paladin. They've aided me greatly in escaping the Citadel. Having to hold both my tongue and my form in the presence of the Necromancer was even more difficult than it had been with Samuel. But I held firm, as I knew that his magic would help restore the crystal to its former glory. And when I had that in my hands again, my power would be complete. The Renard rebels seemed to be completely fooled by my disguise. The poor, gullible creatures. If only they knew who I really was, I doubt they'd be so accommodating. They are still just as proud and arrogant as I remember, and I've made a mental note to myself to let the demons know where this rebel group is hiding. As Medeus was so desperate to get a look at how my companion and I were getting on, that he invited us both to a meeting. I thought he was going to give me away, but he ended up presenting us with a doll of one of the Renar elders, my dear adopted sister. If we can break her curse, then she can open a rift for us. Ideally, I would have liked to avoid killing one of my most devoted followers, but unfortunately, he got in my way. With him out of the picture, it should clear the path to our goal. My companion's attempts to bond with me are almost touching. But this is not about making bonds, it's about breaking them. And I long to be free. It was most strange being back in the academy again. Asmodeus had clearly exploited my adopted sister's profound stupidity. And now the place was a tomb filled with familiar faces in spirit form. I was surprised that I felt absolutely no guilt when I saw them. I am not the boy I once was. The secret of riff running will soon be in my companion's hands. Although I already know how to use it, the power is useless to me in this world. I've almost gotten used to having this creature around. Perhaps I can show them the virtues of chaos in greater depth once we leave this world. The taste of freedom is sweet indeed. So many nights I have spent dreaming of destroying the one who imprisoned me. The one who extinguished the single candle of light in my life. I have become the darkness itself. Revenge will be mine.